Tom, we were talking yesterday about machine learning and mm -hmm. AI, and you showed me a really cool example of us doing that in reality. Tell us about that. Yeah, so a lot of companies out there are talking about applying AI, um, and they're probably, in a lot of cases, they're not really doing it. They're really doing descriptive analytics. Cantor Profiles is actually working on, on applying some real AI fundamentals using our own data, right? And in this case, we're using it for fraud detection. Uh, Cantor Profiles has a tremendous amount of data on new registrants, and we know what the characteristics of those registrants are that end up being bad actors when they get into our panel. Uh, and so we're actually using a boosted decision tree model within Microsoft uh, Azure Machine Learning Studio to pull in that data and evaluate what are those characteristics that are most important, and then routing panelists as they subscribe to our panel through this mechanism to come up with a probability and predict whether or not they're going to be fraudulent. So translation, you're taking older profile registration and performance data, pushing it into this Azure environment, mm -hmm teaching it what it needs to look for for fraud detection and then seeing what comes out. Yes, and it's a, it's a real iterative process. We gave the, uh, we experimented with a lot of features, a lot of data about these respondents and not only did we come up with a pretty good good set, but the, the, the machine learning algorithm is telling us what's most important about those respondents and then it's generating a decision tree and you know humans are notoriously bad at generating a very, very complex decision tree and computers are incredibly good at this. Is right? that what we're seeing here? So that's what we're seeing here. So it's telling us that you know what, what the most important attribute of a, of a new respondent is and if, if they have that attribute, if it's a yes, well then move them down toward this part of the decision tree and on all the way through at the end and then you're terminating at a point that'll give you a probability and tell you, no, don't let this person in or let this person on through, they're good. And that right? has to be done quickly at the time that they're Yes, it's really important because a, a new panelist that gets into the panel, can, they can do some really bad things very quickly if they get in, right? right? And, and our, our uh, main concern is we do want to remove those people, but we certainly don't want to throw out the good with the bad, right? So right. The, the, you can potentially be too careful and turn off certain sources because you can't distinguish the good from the bad. This helps us distinguish good from bad with more precision and at a higher speed. Yes. And that's what these different shapes reflect? So, yeah, this is, this is uh, referred to as a boosted decision tree. So it's not just that there's one decision tree here. There, in this case, there are actually 182 that's a lot. decision trees, yes, that are, that are constantly evaluating the output of the one before it and reorganizing themselves in a way to decide how do we generate the best possible outcome, the highest predictor of So of as an example, you told me yesterday, one of the first variables is what is the browser or operating system the person is coming in on? Correct. And then it goes from there. Yes, and then it spiders from there, it looks at the source of that respondent, it looks at the device that they're registering on, it looks at the country they're from, the email domain that they're coming from, all of these things are, are helpful indicators as to whether or not they're going to be a bad Even actor. you mentioned the length of their name and how did it look like sort of a fake name or a real name. Yes, you can imagine cases. a case where somebody's registering 100 times with Paul1 at Gmail and then Paul2 at Gmail and then Paul3. Mm -hmm. I mean, that in and of itself can, can, can reveal a pattern that, that the machine learning algorithm can detect quite easily. So let's just go to the example you showed about China yep. and how that plays out. Yeah, so I can... Uh, pull up a, an example. So this is um, our data set in action that will show um, what the world looks like. So this is trended over time and this is just showing us the, the, the algorithm is giving us green saying there's a pretty low probability that these respondents are going to be fraudulent and the red across the top is fraudulent. pretty high. The yellow is the one where mm, we're just trying to make a determination and, um, and maybe that requires some secondary analysis, right? But so if green we, is good, Red is fraudulent, yellow we're not sure. Yes, but if we just zero in on China, you can get a, start to get a sense of why this is so important. Um, is, you know, China over the past several days, we've actually been under attack uh, from, for some really bad actors out there who are making up a huge proportion of the overall recruits we get. But we can't forget that, that this, even though the proportion of the good response has been, uh, it has seemed to have diminished, the volume of those good respondents hasn't changed. Now, you know, the reflexive reaction, if you can't make this distinction, is to just turn everything off, right? And we don't want to because do that. Because there's a lot of red, so you say shut it down. Yes. But that would be a bad thing, because then we'd lose a lot of good respondents. That would hurt our capacity in China. Right. Right. Yeah. So part of what you're using is machine learning to figure out how to maximize the yellow and make them be good or bad in terms of a designation. Yep. And then also knowing how to 
ensure that the reds stay out, but you're not throwing out good people with the bad. Yes, and to the extent that we were having, we, we had a team uh, that was manually kind of trying to make the, draw these patterns and draw these distinctions, where you can see the yellow slice is really what we, going forward, want them to evaluate. So we've cut their work down to a tenth of what it was Oh, okay, before. so that's interesting. So part of it is so our people can be more efficient and, and they could look at the yellow cases and use their time for that as opposed to using their time for the red cases. Yes, and the good news is as they start to invest in looking at those respondents and they're gonna decide good or bad, uh, you know, in more of a manual sense, all that information gets fed back into the algorithm to retrain itself. That's why it's kind of the, the learning part of machine learning. So right? people are training the machine to be smart about the next- Even better at predicting the next time around. And that's what machine learning is. Yep. It's people learn first, then they teach the machine, then the machine applies it to all the data. That's right. Right. Cool, Tom. Good work. Thank you. All Thank right. you.